Welcome to Voxiversity. I'm Vox Day. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the socio-sexual hierarchy. That may sound complicated, and that may sound new to you, but this is something that you know intimately. It's something with which you've been familiar since you were in school. It's something that you have around you at all times, in every organization, in every company, in every social group in which you participate. The social sexual hierarchy is how men and boys relate to one another. What you are, how you behave, and what your natural inclinations are likely to be. There are five ranks and they've been developed from the concept that was originally introduced by the pickup artists. Uh, the early pickup artists, Roycey, Roosh, uh, often talked about alphas and betas. Alphas were men who were sexually successful, men who women were attracted to, men who found it easy to attract women. Betas, in their parlance, were men who were not attractive to women. The socio-sexual hierarchy should not be confused with this, even though it sounds similar and even though we use some of the similar terms, because the socio-sexual hierarchy brings in social dominance, social hierarchy. It's not all about male-female relations, it's just as much about male-male relations, the internal concepts that tend to govern an individual man's behavior. So there are five major ranks, alpha, beta, delta, gamma, and omega. The top of the hierarchy is the alpha, the quarterback on the football team that the head cheerleader dates, the blonde bad guy in every 1980s teen flick. He is the guy that the girls want to be with and the guys want to be like. So what separates the alpha from other men beyond his attractiveness to women is that he is a leader. He is someone that other men naturally want to follow. What he does, they imitate. In when the group is making decisions, his opinion counts for more than others. So there is a natural leader-follower relationship between the alpha male and other men. But this is both a responsibility as well as a right. The alpha tends to be much more cognizant of status than other men. He tends to be protective of his status and he tends to be friendly to those who acknowledge his status and he tends to react badly to those he perceives challenges it. With the alpha, as with all these ranks, positives and negatives, pluses and minuses. It's important to understand when you're thinking about the hierarchy that it's not about trying to maximize your position within it at all times. I wasn't about to get into a fucking big dick competition. Sometimes it is a big dick competition. If you're not naturally suited for one particular rank, you're probably not going to be very good at handling the responsibilities if you're put into a role that requires it. So the second rank is beta. The alpha are the leaders, the betas are the lieutenants. The betas tend to resemble the alphas on the outside, but the difference is they, they lack the ambition and they lack the status consciousness that the alpha has to have. Nah. The beta is almost always going to be found attached to an alpha. The beta likes to be provided with leadership. He likes Roger, to be provided with a vision. <laughs> In some ways, being a beta is arguably the best of the social ranks because it comes with a lot of the privileges of being higher in the social hierarchy. No, 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 there's two O's in Goose. Without all of the responsibilities that fall to the alphas. This is why in corporations, you often see such a problem when a alpha leader retires because they frequently try to elevate his loyal betas to the former alpha's position, which almost invariably fails because the beta is not psychologically suited to play the same role as the alpha that he supports. Betas actually tend to be fairly friendly people, people that it's uh, enjoyable to be around. They're popular with women. They're very popular with women. Hey, Goose, you big stud! 
That's me, honey. But not to the extent of the alphas. You always go home with the hot women. All right, thank you, Carol. In general, you're not going to see a wife fretting about the loyalty of her high status beta husband the way that she is almost invariably going to worry about her alpha husband. Take me to bed or lose me forever. Show me the way home, buddy. Betas tend to be very loyal. Loyalty is their defining trait. The thing that you need to be very careful of with a beta, the one area where you can get yourself in a lot of trouble is if you are disloyal either to them. Well, I just happened to see a MiG-28. We. we. Sorry. We. Or even worse, to the alpha to whom the beta looks. They're not only his lieutenants, they tend to be the alpha's enforcers as well. And so when you are in a group, the kind of people who will take you aside and let you know that maybe you want to adjust your behavior a little bit, those are almost always going to be the betas. The third and most common group is the deltas. I chose the name Delta to apply to them because they are the most liable to move up or down the hierarchy depending on where the group is. Remember, these hierarchies are fractal. You know, someone who is a alpha in a very small group might only be a delta in a larger group of which that little group is a subset. You know the phenomenon, big fish in a small pond is not a big fish in a big lake, much less the ocean. Deltas are the backbone of society. Deltas are the most important part of the hierarchy. They tend to define the success of the group. They tend to define the smooth functioning of the group. The more that a group or organization caters to its deltas, the stronger it's going to be. These are the guys who get the work done. Deltas tend to pride themselves and their defining characteristic is competence. They don't want to lead. They're not necessarily concerned with making sure that the, the will of the alpha is properly followed. They want to do their job. They want to be respected for doing their job. And what they crave more than anything is respect. Now, unfortunately, for society, women are not particularly attracted to deltas. Uh, deltas tend to be the average guy. And of course, as we know, due to hypergamy, women tend to be less than entirely satisfied with average guys. One of the biggest achievements of Western civilization has been the institution of monogamy, preventing the alphas and to a lesser extent the betas from hogging all the desirable women. Monogamy one man, one woman, one husband, one wife, is an excellent way of ensuring that deltas are able to marry and raise families. And this is absolutely critical for the sustainability of a stable society. The harder it is for productive, reliable deltas to engage in successful relationships with women, the more unstable the society is gonna be. This is why polygamous societies are intrinsically less stable than monogamous ones because unhappy deltas are not working away competently at building the infrastructure of society. Now the fourth rank is in many ways uh, the most intriguing and troublesome one, and this is the gamma. The gammas tend to be more intelligent than the norm, more sensitive, they tend to be more introspective. Now this all sounds positive, and there are definitely positive traits to the gamma. You got a problem, friend? But the problem with the gamma is that the gamma is fundamentally unsatisfied with his position in the social hierarchy. Gammas often believe that they should be in charge by virtue of their intelligence. And this, of course, tends to make them extremely disruptive forces in any organization of which they're a part. So whenever you see someone causing trouble in an organization, whenever you see SJWs infesting it and and attempting to force change on a healthy organization, you can be pretty sure that the men involved are going to be gammas. Now there's a lot of different attributes that we could discuss and I will do a video focusing entirely on the gamma and the other ranks in the future. But the most important thing to understand is that the, the chief characteristic of the gamma is his dishonesty. That, that month, I didn't sleep for 25 days. I didn't sleep what? at all. 
I didn't sleep at all for 25 days. The Gamma is dishonest with himself. The Gamma is dishonest with others. And even worse, when he is called out for his dishonesty, he will usually defend himself like a cornered rat. How is that possible? That, that, that I'll tell you how it's possible. You lay in bed, uh, frozen in something approximating terror for eight hours, and then you get up. Rather than simply admit that he was being dishonest. And so what that means is because of that characteristic dishonesty, the Gamma also tends to be conflict avoidant and passive aggressive. I was being professional. A hero played weak, conflict averse. So there is a natural rivalry and a natural dislike between alphas and gammas. When you are running an organization or when you're responsible for an organization, the gammas are always the ones that you need to manage very closely because they are the most likely to behave in a disruptive manner, and they're also the most likely to simply melt down and cause problems of an unpredictable nature. Uh, gammas tend to be disliked by women, whereas women are more or less indifferent towards deltas, they actually tend to be somewhat repulsed by gammas. Just answer me one question. Yes, you're a total fag. This is very frustrating to the gammas because they actually tend to be the romantic ones. Ten things I love about Janie. They tend to be the ones who will obsess over a particular woman and write her poems and fail to understand that the, the strength of his desire for her does not cause her to desire him in any way. You know, introspective is one word for the gamma. Narcissistic might be another one. However, for all their challenges, gammas are still part of the social hierarchy. Gammas usually do find a woman with whom they can have a successful relationship in the end. The fifth rank is the most tragic and difficult rank. It's the omega. And the omega is the quintessential social reject. Excuse me. The omega is the one Excuse me. who is not even in the game where women are concerned. Okay, but that's the last draw. Yeah, whereas the gamma might be the one muttering in his beer to his friend in the corner at the party, nobody ever even thought of inviting the omega. The omega is literally never there. And omegas tend to creep women out. Just the mere fact of them being around, even if they don't say anything, is often upsetting to women. They're not necessarily incompetent. They're merely socially handicapped, usually in multiple ways. Omegas can be the classic school shooters. If you look at Adam Lanza of Sandy Hook fame, he would be an obvious example of the Omega type. Omegas tend to keep to themselves. They don't tend to have many male friends. They don't tend to have any female relationships at all. You know, most of them live quiet lives, keeping mostly to themselves. Although, as was uh, shown in the movie Office Space, they do occasionally snap. When you hear about the quiet guy who never bothered anyone, who suddenly flips out and burns his company building to the ground, you can be highly confident that you're dealing with an Omega. Now, why do these things matter? You know, why do we talk about these ranks? You know, is it to make the Alphas feel good about themselves? Is it to make the Omegas feel bad about themselves? No, not at all. The reason that the social sexual hierarchy matters is because the patterns of human behavior it identifies allows us to recognize, understand, and anticipate the behavior of other individuals once we have successfully identified their rank in the hierarchy. Not only that, but you can use the hierarchy to avoid obvious problems in your organization or your group. For example, if you happen to hire a young, attractive female intern, do not assign her to an alpha especially not if it's a married alpha, because the chances are very, very high that they're going to have an affair. By the same token, you probably don't want to assign a gamma to manage a group of people, especially a mixed group of people, because gammas tend to view power as a chance to make up for all their junior high and high school frustrations. You know, they tend to look at power as a way of getting back at people. And you can see this in practically any of the 
pieces that have been written by male journalists about the confirmation of Judge Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh, being an athlete from an elite prep school, represents the much hated jock alpha to the gammas of the press. And you know, you can see and read their psychological issues coming out on the page as they attack this guy that they've never met, who's done nothing to them. It's not all ideological. A lot of it is psychological and a lot of it is rooted in these sociosexual hierarchical issues. The more that you develop the ability to identify the traits of your own sociosexual rank, the easier it is to modify your own behavior and optimize your own behavior. It's especially useful when you're dealing with others. You know, I make use of my knowledge of the sociosexual hierarchy on a regular basis in my business relationships. I know that I need to be careful about inadvertently challenging an alpha. I know that I need to make sure not to say anything disrespectful about an organization for which a beta is working. I also know that when I'm dealing with deltas, I need to make sure that I give them the respect for their competence and their hard work that they need. And with the gammas, I always make sure to not put them in mission critical positions just in case they have a gamma meltdown and elect to declare war on the organization. These patterns of behavior are very, very reliable. They are very, very recognizable. And once you begin to see them, it's very, very difficult to ignore them. I think that if you study the groups in which you are a member and you learn to start identifying who's the alpha, who's the beta, who are the deltas, who are the gammas, what you're going to find is that you're going to be able to navigate the social challenges presented by that group in a much more effective manner. This is Vox Aversity. I'm Vox Day.